The interesting part is, like the homie just said, daylight will smoke us all. What people don't be understanding is like, daylight is my daylight is my homie. I look at daylight as a a, a, a dear compatriot and a, and someone I would wouldn't hesitate to call a friend. Personally and professionally, you know. So me and daylight have been on the road together. Me and Daylight have rapped together. Me and Daylight have sat down and had all kinds of conversations together. And it's not to out our inward relationship, but it's like we know each other's limits. We know what we what each other are capable of. We don't look at it as a competition amongst each other. We look at it as how can we use our skill sets to create some tension to push you up to the next level. And I think people kind of get it fucked up in a different way. And because maybe me and me and, and Mickey and, and 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 Daylight and a few of the other ITs, Los King, Los IT, um, because we have a different level of kind of like relationship, we understand that, that if somebody says they want to be the best, or if somebody says that they want to level up to the next level, then okay, it's, it, we finna we finna jump this motherfucker. <laughs> We finna be at this. We finna be at his throat, right? We finna put constraints around him. Uh, we gonna attack him when he least expects it, um, because that's part of his practice, you know. Um, he he can write his own rules for sure about what he wants his what he wants his or her practice session to be, but that puts them in a certain comfort zone. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be antagonistic or or even to the point of a of a strenuous, um, you know, brutality. But you got to put some tension. You got to put some danger um, in the room uh, to really get people to break through what they may be considered to be their ceilings, you know. And I think most of the rappers who really do this for real. They're very candid about that. They're very open. Now, you got some niggas who have one foot in, one foot out. They care more about the streets. They, they care more about this, more about that. So they don't know how to navigate that space. But I think where we come from, even though niggas is from the streets and gang banging and all type of shit, when we stepped into this rap shit, we stepped in with both feet deep. And it's like, we're going to do this till we're 100 years old. And when you start to approach it like that, you don't, you're not as sensitive to what it what it takes for you to move up to the next level. So for us, when it, when a person says that he want he or she wants to be the best, that's not like a easy thing. That that doesn't open you up to an easy road. That's when the demons step out, right? That's when the bear traps get set up, the the snake pits, the quicksand, the the final bosses, the final boss is sitting way at the end of the game, and it's like let's go. And everybody's happy. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody is like, yo, we're happy. Like this is, I'm going to find joy in wrestling these fucking alligators, right? Because I want to learn how to do double entendres like this. That don't come for you. That don't come from you not being challenged. For some people, it made that it comes naturally. Nah, that shit comes from somebody sitting around you or you humbling yourself to study a master or a grandmaster at double entendres and zipping your fucking lips until you learn how to do it, right? Mickey wrote a whole essay on how to do double entendres, which is crazy, like a whole fucking essay. <laughs> the, triangulation, the triangulation method, right? His methodology to build a double entendre. Um, what goes into it, what it requires the basic understanding is that you need to have of connotations and you got to expand your vocabulary. Um, you got to read the, the, the first and second and third and fourth and fifth definitions of a word so it's actually valid, right? And on top of all of the kind of morphology and stuff, you got to do understand how to bend letters and shit like that. Um, that takes study and time and work. It takes, it takes years, but if you want to be the all-around best, you got to do all that shit, man. And niggas got to kill you. 
Niggas that come in, kill you. You got to get killed, come back. Get killed, come back. Get killed, come back. Get killed, come back. Rap till you tired. Wake up rapping. Rap, rap, rap. Wake up, do another rap. Write that rap. Do this. Get bodied. Get let go. Go get challenged. Go to another crew. Get bodied. Go to another. Go to a whole another rap crew. Get bodied over there. You gotta. You gotta move. You gotta move like you want it. You know, and it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, it's a gauntlet, and I think most rappers who are really, really good. In their, in their resume, you'll see that. Yeah, man, I did open mics for 10 years. Right? Man, I rapped. I listened to everything. Like, you take somebody like Vic Mensa, right? My bro, my bro Vic Mensa. Vic Mensa listens to everything. And not just, like, casually. And I don't want to say, I don't want to put it out there like this nigga's a rap historian. But... His reference points and the things that he listens to deeply. He's a student of the game. So it's not surprising that he'll do a freestyle. Like in the midst of this, all this old goofy shit. That man went up to uh, LA Leakers and bodied that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he, like if you haven't heard, in the midst of all this goofy dumb shit with this nigga Royce. Vic Mensa went up to LA Leakers and destroyed that shit. Destroyed it. And it wasn't like a surprise. The level that he did it was like, damn, like this. <laughs> like the level that he did it was was kind of like, oh, ooh, this ain't something you just pass over. But rewind to a few months ago, more than a few months ago, I was on Clubhouse with Vic. It was me, Vic, and Bun B. And we was talking about, the, the room was about solitaire and like the card game solitaire. And just so happened when I opened the room, Bun jumped in, Vic jumped in, and then it went, it turned into Vic talking to Bun, trying to figure out or telling him all the shit that he had learned from listening to Riding Dirty. Right? The UGK album, Riding Dirty. Or Dirty Money. Is it Dirty Money? Or Riding Dirty. I forgot which album it is. And like Vic was just like technically articulating, going back and forth, telling Bun B like what he was, like all the nooks and crannies and reciting shit, it was fucking phenomenal, right? To see that this dude is a student of the game. So there's no, that that I'm going to bury myself into study. You come months later, this nigga goes up to LA Leakers and destroys that shit. It was, it was mean. So the path to greatness the path to be the best, the pathways to get really, really nice is really hard. And every rapper that I know who's really nice, not just average nice, but really exceptionally nice, like working on their own, like that, it's hard, man. It's hard. I remember I was with Homeboy Sandman <laughs> in New York. He was just walking around, went, went up to Soho House, vibed. And I was like, yo, what you finna? I was like, he's, like, he's like, yeah, I finna get up out of here. He's like, yo, what you finna do? He's like, I finna go home and write some raps. <laughs> that was one of the most beautiful things I ever heard. Like, yo, yo what you finna do? Ah oh, man, I'm finna go meet up with this chick. Yo, what you finna do? Ah oh, man, I'm finna go over here to this club. Like, what you finna do? Oh yeah, you're finna go over here and do. What you finna do? I'm finna go to the studio. Or I'm finna go. He's like, I'm finna go home and write some raps. <laughs> I love it, man. 